right? You're alive. We'll praise the Lord, everyone. Let's pray, and we'll get into our August theme of Bible studies and teaching. Amen. Father, we thank you. We love you, Jesus, and we do just invite your presence into this place tonight. We ask God that you would just bless our group and this topic and your word tonight, and and help us, Lord, just have a desire to draw near to you, Father. We pray for those who aren't here tonight that you'd encourage and uplift them. And we just ask God for your perfect will. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Anybody have an awesome testimony they want to share? Of something that God has done incredibly in your life this week? <laughs> Maybe. Dallas? Oh, Tim wants me to share that I went kayaking and I didn't drown. <laughs> well, we're glad that you didn't well, drown for the first time. And jet skiing, I drove the jet ski. Yeah, I, I didn't mention that. Yeah, yeah. And you didn't drown. So. What? Crash, <laughs> no brakes. Well, I had an opportunity today um, when I was working to talk with an individual who was unloading my truck and uh, he was just uh, shared we got on the subject of church and he had gone to a church camp with his family and just shared some disappointments and in the direction that the church he attends was going um, kind of following a lot of the pressures and the direction of the world and in all the things that's going on that the world wants everybody to accept and if you don't accept it then you're um, considered you know hating it and uh, and all these other derogatory terms that they like to throw around. And uh, so I had the opportunity to tell him that, he, and he lives in a, a town nearby, uh, in a town nearby where we were at. And I, I said, well, I have a good friend who's starting a church in, in your town. And so I got a hold of that individual, and I was able to relay the information to him. And I said, and, you know, we, Monroe's a little farther away, but you're always welcome to. So I gave him our information as well. So I want to pray for... His name is Steve. Just want to pray for him and his family. Just that God would bless them and and uh, give them direction for what uh, they need in their life. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly disappointing. If, I would think it would be very disappointing if uh, the church maybe that you've attended your whole life now is all of a sudden going in a different direction that you know is contrary to the Word of God. Uh, the Bible says that. We can't be in the flesh and please God, right? right? And that the carnal mind or the fleshly mind is division against God. So we can't operate in this flesh, and certainly we can't go with the ways of the world. The Bible says that uh, uh, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is the ways of death. And certainly God is not... Um, God is not threatened by or... Um, surprised by or surprised by anything or yeah he doesn't feel pressured to you know God doesn't feel pressured to change his word of course he can't change okay. you know and so if, if somebody's changing the word of God and changing what they're teaching then why did it change and who gave him the authority to change it and so those are some questions that I asked him you know and hopefully um Gave him just some opportunities to think about some things, and then we had another another individual that I've been praying for that connected with me a couple weeks ago and and had some questions. Um, so I'm looking forward to connecting with him, and then another friend that I've been connected with uh, gave me some books and said, "Hey, I want you to look through these and tell me what you think." They're kind of like those books that people write and say, you know, answers to common questions of the Bible and. Uh, and so it just created some opportunities for topics and things to talk about. So I think that there's always, you know, people searching, right? Maybe not everybody all at the same time, but there's always people who are uh, looking to get more out of their, their relationship with God. And certainly with God, we can get as much out of this relationship as we want, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. So I'm going to read Matthew 28 and 18, and we got a, a large group of people in here tonight, So, um, and I don't have a ton of verses to, to toss around, but uh, 
Um, Sister Pat, do you want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verses 17 through 21? And then Brother John, do you want to read, uh, you want to get Matthew 28, 18 through 20? I don't have a pen here to write down what I'm giving these to, so. Yeah, Second Corinthians 5 and 17. Pat. Yeah, Sharon, you want to get Leviticus 8, 14 and 15? And then uh, Charlie... Ezekiel 45, 15 through 17. Sister Dawn, 2 Timothy 2, 15. And that's about it. So, um, Bible studies and teaching. What do we know about these topics? Anybody? When somebody thinks about Bible studies and teaching. What do you think about? Nothing down. comes to mind. My mind goes blank. <laughs> <laughs> sitting down or I just don't want to talk. The Bible. What's that? About sitting down with others and going through the Bible. Sitting down with somebody and going through the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, like around somebody's kitchen table, mm -hmm. doing a one on one personal home Bible study with somebody. 12 week lessons. <laughs> right. We we have some some you know some uh, I guess some well designed studies yeah yeah well designed studies and things like that. What else could it look like? Fellowship. Fellowship. Because you go every week or every time, and it gets to be okay. Let's have coffee and snacks, and you kind of talk about your day, and then it goes into what you're studying about. Kind of. Okay. Are you talking about like? I'm talking about just what comes to your mind. I'm not talking about anything in particular. Like topical maybe studies. What, is, what, what, what does it mean to you? Bible studies or what things come to mind when you think about uh, Bible studies or teaching? Questions answered. Questions that you might have that answer, right? Um, opinions. opinions. Do they matter? <laughs> I, I mentioned something to the individual today uh, that I, I just said, you know, we, we do have to be careful when reading the Bible and looking at it that we don't form our ideas or ideology or opinions around uh, just the context of one verse or ideology of man or how people interpret it or even doctors of the, of the you know, people have their doctorates and, and theological studies. It's, it's not about that. It's about scripture interpreting, interpreting sorry, scripture, right? Yes. Amen. What else? Bible studies and teaching. When I think about studies, especially in the Bible, you have to see how the theme or the topic is interwoven throughout. And in the, con the, the context of the culture and of those other things, because a lot of times I think that brings insight that we may not naturally on the surface understand. Right. So, I mean, there's there's a variety of things that it can mean to people, and not any of them necessarily wrong, um, and not one more right than the other. But it can be as, you know, as, I don't want to use the term basic, but as introductory or as deep as you want to go, right? It can be, like Sister Dawn said, going through the Bible and understanding some basic understandings of the Bible, or it can be, uh, like my wife said, a, a theological study on a certain culture or why something is done a certain way um, for that Jewish culture or that Greek culture that they were in during the time of the writing of the Bible. So it is very, very important to, to study and to teach and to be taught. Amen? And that was kind of the point of the question, is just for us to understand that. Uh, another thing that uh, that I mentioned to my friend today was uh, I think it, it's easy if we kind of go with man's interpretation of what religion or relationship with God should be or the Bible to, you know, I mean, what happened? When we did that, we broke it down to one, one hour a week. And I asked him, I said, what happens if you ate one meal a week? How long would you last? 
you'd get very weak, you'd get sick, and eventually you'd probably die if you just ate one meal a week. Spiritually, the same thing, you know? So certainly getting together on a Sunday morning, a Sunday night, Sunday school, Wednesday night Bible study, those are all very important. Um, but we have to realize that this then kind of falls upon our own selves to read and study the Bible. Absolutely. Amen? And not only that, but now then to take what we learn and to apply it and to teach others. So Matthew 28 and 18 through 20, Brother John, I believe has that. <clears throat> and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto you in heaven and in earth. Unto me. Unto me. Jesus said, All power is given unto me. Yes. What it says right there. Yes. <laughs> Not unto you, Lord, and teach all nations, <laughs> baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whosoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. Amen. Amen. So he said, All power is given unto me, speaking of himself. Right. Yes. Now we do have power through his name, so. You're not wrong with the idea, but I just wanted to make sure we we didn't misquote the, the verse there. And then mm -hmm. teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So what is this called, that verse? Great commission. The Great Commission. Mm -hmm. And who gave it? Jesus. Jesus. And if anybody knows the Word of God, it's Jesus. He knew it before it was... Put into Bible form, right? Right. He is, the Bible says, the Word made flesh. And to whom was he speaking to? Everybody for all time. Yes, exactly. He was speaking in this place in Scripture to his disciples, but it's for us as well, right? To his disciples. So Jesus gave this great commission to us. So we're focusing this month on Bible studies and teaching. And tonight, tonight we're going to look at our personal ministries. Um, anybody ever think about your personal ministry? Charlie, what's your personal ministry? What do you feel your personal Put me on ministry? The spot. <laughs> well, you shook your head, so. Um, well, I think everybody has, there's general slots that we could all fit into, and then of course there's more specific. Yeah, and that, that's kind of what yeah. what I'm looking at right here. It's more specific, our personal, uh, something that we know according to our temperance and our uh, personality types and to our giftings and, and that such that, that God has called us to. I think for me, um, helping. Helping? Helping in general. Um, you know, mm -hmm. What needs to be done, I'll do it. It's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, I think mine is that I I can explain things I feel, and maybe it's just practice, um, like health issues or conditions or ways to take care of yourself to people, not just for my work. I end up doing that for friends and family, they call me. It helps maybe that because I'm the only healthcare person in the whole family or somebody that they know. But so kind of ministering. So it's you know what do you think about this or that or mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And I was so upset with my doctor because he said this and I said well what else happened and all these things and trying to explain things to people at their level, yeah. you know, analogies and. You know, if they're a farmer, to take that knowledge that they have to try to, or if they're a housewife or, you know, a woman of the house or whatever. Okay. Anybody else? Coffee. <laughs> Anybody. Just, just kind of share what you think, you know. Where God has, has gifted you, you know, it could be a specific thing, like, you know, um, I know for a couple people in this room, um, 
it, it's not so much in the forefront, but it's kind of behind the scenes, you know, where it might be, you know, technology or uh, things like that, where you're working more with things necessarily than people, which are very, very, very important, or um, creative ideas and designing things and things like that. For other people, like myself, that may not be it <laughs> at all. And, uh, you know, I feel like I really enjoy teaching, you know, so I do feel like that is a, um, a, a personal ministry of mine that I try to strive at, that I know that I can get better at and I want to do better at because I really enjoy it. It could be serving, you know, it could be administration, all these different, I think Romans chapter 12 covers a lot of different ministries and gifts, right? Anybody else? Landscaping. And landscaping? Yeah. I'll, did you say landscaping? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. To where you can you can serve and that, that can be a ministry of yours, right? I know that I've seen you in our neighborhood many times helping it's your aunt over there? Yeah. Yeah. Helping her do stuff around the yard. Why do you go over there and help her? Because I want to. Because, because I like doing it. Yeah, and she probably could use the help, right? Yep. And that can be a ministry of serving somebody in that capacity. So I think that God has gifted all of us in those personal ways, right? And I think it's really important that we that we do try to strive in those areas where we feel it is within our uh, maybe our personality or our temperament, uh, our likes and our uh, things we do well at, uh, because God God knows those things, right? He knows that not everybody wants to be in the limelight, but He knows that there's some people that are going to excel in the limelight. Uh, he knows that there's some people that do well when they can just uh, really be able to be by themselves and then develop and design things uh, that are going to be a blessing to His ministry. So it takes, you know, the Bible talks about us as a body, right? And all different members. And when you think about your body, we've all got different abilities, uh, you know. Um, but certainly, if you were to take away a part of your your body, maybe a digit or a limb or something like that, or a sense or an ability or a feeling, um, some of those things, that could be challenging in our life. And so... That's why it's so important as the body of Christ that we all work together according to how God has called us in unity of the faith to, to serve and to minister together. So we do all have personal ministries, but we also all have the same ministry that is very personal. So we all have personal ministries, but we also then have the same ministry that is very personal, and it's personal to Jesus Christ. Can anybody think... And, uh, uh, you know, of, uh, and, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but because I've had time to study this out and think about it. Um, but can anybody think of a verse in the Bible that defines what this personal ministry is? Can you tell us who's going through your prayer closet? Yes, that is, prayer is definitely a ministry. But I'm talking about... Uh, in the topic of Bible studies and teaching where God has given us, it specifically uses the word a ministry in the Bible. It says he's given us a ministry. Um, who did I give 2 Corinthians 5 to? Is that you, Sister Pat? 5 and 17. 5 and 17? Yeah, 5 and 17. I'm yeah. sorry. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Through 21. Yep, do 21. Why don't you go ahead and read that? Okay, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and have given us the ministry of re reconciliation. Hold on. He's given us the what? Ministry. Ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation. There we go. Go on, 19 through 21. Keep going. Yep. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not input their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. 
Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ, and through God, we're uh, pleasing through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf to reconcile to God, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteous of God in him. Amen. So that's the verse. God has given us all a ministry of reconciliation. And um, in, in the Bible, when it talks about reconciliation, there's a couple of verses in the Old Testament that we're going to look at as well. But in the New Testament, um, so first off, let's, let's say in our English, our American language today, um, what does it mean to be reconciled? Restored. Restored. Balanced. Balanced. Right. And the IRS guy. <laughs> Who likes things to be reconciled? <laughs> Anybody else? To be reunited. Reunited? Yeah. On a relationship level? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same page. Be on the same page? Mm -hmm. So, in the New Testament, in the Greek, reconciled, in that verse where it says, be reconciled to God, it means to change mutually. Mutually is key there, right? That is uh, uh, figuratively to compound the difference, to reconcile. So, so it's a com compromise? It's not a comp. Well, it, that sounds like what you said there. You said both sides have to change. To change mutually. mutually. Not God doesn't change. We have to be, God wants to change us. We have to be in agreement with God to allow Him to change okay. us. So God's the one that makes the decision. We have to be in agreement with that. Mm -hmm. We have to be in mutual decision with that. So it's not like you and I um, compromising to get along or to figure out a problem. Right, that's what I was thinking. Right. So with people, we can be reconciled. So when people are reconciled in a relationship, you do sometimes have to do that, right? That's say, okay, I can see it your way a little bit. Can you see it my way a little bit? And each of you give a little bit, and then you can come to an agreement, right? Mm -hmm. With God, God cannot change, and God will not change. So he won't change his words. Say, okay, I'll tell you what. You don't have to do it exactly this way if you can come a little bit and meet me halfway. But he'll say, I'll tell you what. If you will do what my word says, I can bless you. I can minister to you. I can... I can bless your life and your family. And we that means we have to be in mutual agreement with that. Meaning that God is not going to force it upon us. Right? In fact, the word to confess, uh, when it talks about confessing our sins to God, it means to speak the same, to be in agreement with. So, I remember um, in a message one time that God had given me a thought. And that thought was the difference between what was purchased and what was paid what's the difference in that that's the change right mm -hmm. so if you purchase something that's you know 10.99 and you give them a 20 you're paying more than what it was worth so you expect some change back jesus christ is purchasing we're, we're the purchase possession and he's giving more than what we're worth so there should be some change in our life, mm -hmm. right? So to be reconciled means to change mutually. That uh, means to compound the difference. So he's making up the difference on our behalf that we couldn't make up. The word reconciliation uh, comes from that, and it means to exchange or restoration uh, to the divine favor, atonement or reconciliation. So while... We all have those various ministries that we talked about that are unique to us. We all also have a very similar ministry of reconciliation. Um, you ever find yourself at times in the attitude where you say, I don't want to reconcile? <laughs> in fact, I want it to, I want it. <laughs> Just because we get that adamant attitude in us that says, you know, I'm frustrated or I'm I'm put off enough already, and we allow our flesh to kind of have our way, and it causes a greater separation. But God 
is wanting us to have that reconciliation. Why? So we need to be reconciled to God first, right? Why do we need to be reconciled to God? We don't want to go to heaven. You got it. You have to. It's you well, know, maybe even more than that. We need to be reconciled to God because we are in the wrong. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, right? Mm -hmm. And our sins have separated us from our God. So we need to be reconciled. We need to have that mutual change or that exchange on our life. And so we know that that's done. So we know why we need to be reconciled because our sins have separated us from Him. How are we reconciled? We know through this. Re repentance. And... Through the new birth experience, right? Through the gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection. Um, and this is all important because if God has given us the ministry of reconciliation, we certainly need to be able to explain to somebody why they need to be reconciled unto God and how they can be reconciled unto God. Because I think it's very easy for people just to assume that because I haven't shot anybody today, me and God are on the same page. <laughs> Amen. How many times have you heard that? Or used to? I used to think that. Well, I've never killed anybody. I've never robbed a bank. Never stole a car. I had a girl tell me that one time. I never killed anybody. I was like, Are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a good person. I'm a good person, right? That is the general consensus. Compared to who, though? That's exactly right. <laughs> right. Our righteousness is like filthy rags. So. If we're going to have that mindset of this ministry of reconciliation uh, that can come through Bible studies and through teaching people to the Great Commission like we read about, we need to help people understand why you need to be reconciled unto God. And that is something that it takes prayer. And it takes a genuine, a genuine concern for somebody's welfare. Right? Mm -hmm. What else does it take? Patience. Some patience. That's a good one. What Long else? Suffering. <laughs> Compassion. Some sympathy. Some understanding and understanding. Dedication. Dedication. Oh yeah, dedication. Yeah. <laughs> right? All those things. We gotta have what did Jesus say? Seek ye first. first. Oh, even I just said seek ye, and you knew what I was gonna say. <laughs> first what? The kingdom, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. his righteousness. So that should be the first thing on our mind for everybody is how can I get them reconciled to God if they're not? How can I, what can I do to open the door? Take some sensitivity to the spirit, anointing of God. So a lot of the things we mentioned all come through the gift of the Holy Ghost working in us, right? Dallas, do you naturally have patience? You think so? Just comes naturally to you that oh, you're, oh you can put yeah. up with anything for any amount of time. Jalen never gets on your nerves. <laughs> no, okay. might be the wrong sibling, but <laughs> oh. I, I think all of us need work in that area, right? Or uh, dedication, or compassion. We don't always feel that compassion. Sometimes we feel, well, you wet your bed laying it. Oh wait, it's made your bed. Sorry. <laughs> right you made the mess you deal with it and but jesus really didn't operate that way did he so he's given us this ministry of reconciliation so we know that we're reconciled to god through the new birth through the gospel of jesus christ his death burial, and resurrection we're justified by our faith we're not justified by our actions. We're not justified by our thoughts. We're not justified by our good intentions or our good looks or none of that, right? We're only justified by our faith in Jesus Christ. Who had Leviticus 8? Is that you, Sharon? Okay, 8 through uh, 14 through 15, 14 and 15. And he brought the bull for the sin offering. Then Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the bull for the sin offering, and Moses killed it. 
And then he took the blood and put some on the horns of the altar all around with his finger and purified the altar. And he poured the blood at the base of the altar and consecrated it to make atonement for it. To make atonement for it. Another word in the King James used is reconciliation. So it was the blood that made the atonement. It was the blood that made the reconciliation that reconciled it. Who has Ezekiel 45? Fifteen through seventeen. And one lamb out of the flock, out of two hundred, out of the fat pastures of Israel, for a meat offering, and for a burnt offering, and for peace offerings, to make reconciliation for them, saith the Lord God. All the people of the land shall give this oblation for the prince in Israel, and it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings, and drink offerings in the feasts new moons, and in the Sabbaths, and all the solemn, solemnity of the house of Israel, he shall prepare the sin offering, and the meat offering, and the burnt offering, and the peace offerings, to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. So it was all through those offerings, through the blood of those animals, right? <clears throat> in the Old Testament, that word reconciliation, uh, it it means to cover, and this reminds me of a Bible study that Sharon taught, and Brother Tim was the one that uh, kind of spoke up on that and talked about the subject a little bit, but it means to cover specifically with bitumen. Remember that, Brother mm -hmm. Tim? What did that mean? Remember bitumen? Well, bitumen is like a rock of coal. Yeah, it's like a very yeah. heavy, right. tar, tar, thick tar-type subject substance. Um, so back in their days, uh, you know, they had like tar pits and things like that. Um, so reconciliation needs to cover with tar. So with that blood, when it was applied to the altar and was applied to the sin of Israel, it's covered completely. Who, you ever put tar over something? Can you, can you see through it? No. Can you get it off? No. no. It's covered. It's it's adhering to it, right? It goes through all the little nooks and crannies. It soaks in, right? It covers <laughs> everything. The Bible said that it's the blood that makes an atonement upon the altar. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So that word reconciliation in the Old Testament is referring to that covering, uh, specifically with that tar-like substance, uh, to cancel, to appease, or to make an atonement, to disannul, forgive, be merciful, pardon, to pitch, right? Kind of like what, that's what uh, Noah did on the ark, inside and outside, was put that pitch on there. So it's like that tar, it's, it's a sealant, it covers, right? So we know that, according to the scripture, that it's the blood shedding blood in the Old Testament of that animal that pushed the sins ahead of Israel for the year. But in the New Testament, once and for all, the Bible says, for those who have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. So through these verses, we can understand that our being reconciled to God takes place when the blood is applied. Amen. And so both the Old Testament and the New Testament agree in this. Again, the Old Testament means to be covered with that tar-like uh, substance. The New Testament means that we're exchanged. We were bought with a price. We were paid for. An exchange was made. We've been redeemed, purchased back. Because the penalty of sin is what? Death. 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 But he took that penalty on the cross and covered all of our sin with his blood. And so it tells us in that scripture that Sister Pat read that Jesus made the reconciliation, right? Um, it says, who reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. All things are of God, and God reconciled us to him. He did it. We just got to have faith in his word and be obedient to his word. But he's the one that made the offering. It's his grace by which we're saved. So he, he presented that opportunity to us. 
and reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And then, not just that, but then has given us. What did Jesus say? If I've forgiven you, then you also ought to forgive, forgive one another. Right? That we are to love one another even as Christ loved us. Even in marriage, the Bible talks about husbands loving your wives even as Christ loved the church. He's given us a ministry of reconciliation. So if we've been given that ministry of reconciling others to Jesus Christ after we've come to him through his gospel, then what would we say our responsibility is and, and how does it align with this month's focus? If we've been given that ministry of reconciliation, Pass it on. we need, right. right, what do we need to do is we study are, to show ourselves approved. Study to show ourselves approved. That's the next verse. Can I give oh, that one it? to you? Mm -hmm. Who has Sister Dawn has second Timothy? We'll get that in just a oh, second. Okay, so. so our personal ministry of reconciliation will only be as effective as our personal relationship with Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Our prayer life, our study habits, reading the Bible. If I'm going to help somebody become reconciled to God, if I realize that, because I think we need to be careful. We just don't go with the, you know, the world, Christian world view of what it means to be saved and, and just, you know, I'm a good person. I believe in God. Huh? James said the devils themselves believe in and tremble. Mm -hmm. So he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. And if we're going to help people be reconciled to God, as we focus this month on uh, Bible reading or Bible studies and, and teaching then I'm going to be encouraging and promoting us a lot to be, you know, whether it's that uh, 10 minute Bible study that we have a conversation with as we're passing by somebody at the grocery store or at work or it's that 12 week Bible study that somebody commits to around their dinner table at their home whatever it might be but God has given us that ministry to be teaching his word to others in our home, in our family, our own children, right? Teaching and ministering the word of God. Sister Dawn, 2 Timothy 2, 15 and 16. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun vain and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. So I've had conversations with people, and they, they want to know about what I think about certain scriptures. Uh, like, well, how long do you think Adam and Eve came, lived in the Garden of Eden? Uh, if, if God's eternal, who created God? You know, and talks about these endless genealogies and these stories that really don't bring us any closer to God but are quote-unquote fun to talk about. And he's saying, you know, those types of things, they're just going to lead to more ungodliness. But, he says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman. And that word workman means a laborer or a teacher. And so if we're all been giving a ministry of reconciliation as the church, then we're all to be teachers. Maybe we don't have the gift of teaching. You know, it's, that's our specific gift of we do that all the time, but certainly we can do it at one time or another. Certainly we can teach somebody something. Um, so we have to do our best to read, to pray, to study, so that we're able to lead others to Jesus so they can be reconciled unto God, because that's his desire. Not his will that any perish, but that all come to repentance. How did, how did Jesus begin his ministry? Prayer. Prayer and fasting, right? Are we any better? Is there any other way that we should do it then? Wing it and hope? <laughs> Wing it and prayer? <laughs> no, I think that it takes prayer and fasting. It takes reading and study. Uh, again, that scripture we started with in Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things 
whatsoever I have commanded you, and I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. So he said, go and teach all, all things that I have commanded. So I just want to challenge us tonight to ask ourselves, what does my ministry of reconciliation look like? What does that look like for me? If I've been reconciled unto God, through my relationship with Jesus Christ, and now he has given me that ministry of reconciliation. What does that look like? Who am I currently instructing? Who am I currently teaching? Who am I currently reaching? And again, it, it might maybe maybe I'm not, uh, maybe I don't have a, a committed 12-week Bible study going on right now, but am I committed myself to make a call and to reach out to somebody or to talk to somebody at work or in my neighborhood or whoever it might be or to reach out and minister to somebody who has some questions that, that are looking for some answers. And, you know, it, it's, it's real easy to avoid those topics, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that we need to be very, very intentional, especially in the day and the age that we live in, of trying to reach out and minister to people more and more and more. Amen? So that is going to be our focus this month. Bible studies and teaching. And so we're going to talk about that on our Wednesday nights and what does that look like for us and maybe some ideas on how we can get more motivated to do that more frequently. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and love you, Lord God, for your word tonight and for blessing us and for truly, Lord Jesus, reconciling us to you, God, through your blood, through the cross, God, your love and mercy and grace. And I pray, Lord, that you'd help each and every one of us, Lord, to receive what you have given us as a ministry, Lord God, on that very personal, unique level, but also, Lord God, on that very inclusive level as your church, God, to reconcile, Lord, the world to you, God. Lord, that people might be saved, that they might understand truly how much you love and care for them, God, through your church. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen.